What is happening? My name is Michael and today I'm going to show you how to make a double vanity concrete countertop. We're also going to polish it. We're also going to do a cool live edge. We're even going to crack it and repair it. That happened. That happened. I'm also going to give you some cool tips and tricks. So let's make something cool. So about a little over 10 years ago, I remodeled my in-laws entire master bathroom. During that remodel, I made them a concrete vanity top. And incidentally, it was my second concrete countertop that I had ever made. Now it's held up great, um, but I will be honest with you, it's starting to show its age. But do you remember the concrete bar top that I did recently? My in-laws absolutely fell in love with the exposed aggregate and the live edge with this bar top. If you haven't seen that video yet, link up above right here. So they asked me if I wouldn't mind doing that for their vanity top and I thought, why not? So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be making a double sink vanity top with an exposed aggregate, polished top, and a live edge using this edge mold again. I knew, I knew I'd find another use for this. I, I have got so many projects planned for this. I, I'm definitely gonna get my money's worth out of this thing. We're also gonna be trying out this new sealer and see how this works out for us. So let's get to it. This project is all about the mold. And as you can see, there's actually a lot going on with this mold. Not only do we have our melamine box, but we also have these knockouts and we have this nice edge mold. Now, this particular double vanity is 67 inches wide by 19 and a quarter deep. I cut all my sides at two and three quarter to give me this two inch depth. And the only reason why I went two inches on this particular project is because my edge mold is two inches. That's it. <laughs> but before I forget to tell you, make sure that you allow for the thickness of your particular edge mold. Uh, this one with its varying thicknesses is about three quarters of an inch on average. So to get my 19 and a quarter finished edge, I, need, I needed to make my base at 20 inches. <laughs> I implore you not to make that mistake because I've made that mistake myself and Man, do you want to kick yourself afterwards? Oh yes. <laughs> I got so lucky with this particular project because I it just so happens that I saved the old laminate top for this vanity. So I was able to use that as a template. Speaking of templates, in this particular situation, I have drywall on three sides. And as you know, there is no such thing as square drywall. So it really helps to make yourself a template like this. I, I just used a couple of paint stirs to uh, get the correct angle on both corners. And I just simply used some CA glue to tack them in place very quickly. This will give you the exact 92 degree or 87 degree angle that you have for that particular corner. Now, obviously you can use whatever CA glue that you prefer, but uh, if you click on the link below, I believe you'll get about 10% discount on the Starbond CA glue. Not a sponsored plug, but I do happen to get a kickback when you click on that link below. And it's just, this is just another one of the millions of uses that I happen to use the CA glue for. I attach the sides with an inch and a half spack screws. Before I secure this last side, I do want to secure this edge mold on with some double-sided mounting tape first. That way, I can run the silicone edge mold past the side, butt the side up against it, secure it. That way I don't have to cut the edge mold and I can use this full eight foot section over and over and over again. I've just, I've got so many projects planned for this thing. Then I sealed the corners up with 100% silicone. Uh, I use black so that I can see it very easily and see if there's anything that I need to clean up afterwards. You've seen me do this trick before, but if you haven't, the trick is, is that you lay down a bead of 100% silicone then you spray it with some sort of foam glass cleaner. When you run your finger or like a caulking tool like this 
down the corner, the silicone will not stick to anything that the glass cleaner is on. It just makes for a really smooth, easy application and very easy cleanup. Now, with the rough nature of this profile, completely unnecessary to seal this corner with silicone, but I do wanna seal this gap to prevent material from leaking out this big gaping hole. As for the knockouts, what I've got going on with these knockouts is very simple. I took a half inch sheet of plywood and sandwiched it in between these two pieces of three quarter inch melamine. Then I simply cut my shape out on a bandsaw, wrapped the sides with tape, then I just secure it in place. But this is not the best way to do this and this is not the best material. Best material to use is rigid foam for your knockouts. The reason why is I get a lot of emails of people that have experienced cracking in these two skinny pieces in the front and in the back. And usually that's caused by when they go to knock this knockout out, they're knocking it out unevenly, either this way or this way, and that causes a wedge, too much pressure up against the material. By using rigid foam, that takes that pressure right out of the equation. Now what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to make sure that I pound this out very evenly and very gingerly. When it comes to metal reinforcement, I love using this metal lath. You can usually fi find this in like the drywall aisle of your home center. Um, it's easy to work with, it's not messy. You just clip it with some wire clippers. Now in this particular project, I would probably be fine with just the metal lath, but since I've got these two really skinny parts, both in the front and the back, I'm gonna add some uh, half inch rebar on both the front and the back. Uh, I don't know how necessary this is, but I'm just, just trying to play it safe. <laughs> but key here is have the metal reinforcement ready to go because once you start pouring, you're not gonna have time to cut this stuff to length. Uh, speaking of which, I think we're ready to pour. All right, we're ready to pour, but a, a pro tip here is, and I cannot stress this enough, how important it is to have everything, and I mean everything, ready to go. I've got my entire workstation right next to where I'm going to pour it. I've got my bags open and ready to go. I've got all my tools on my right hand side over here. I've got my water, got my mixing bucket. I've even placed my metal reinforcement nearby so I can grab it, place it, get on to the next step. Also, don't forget to make sure that your mold is level. I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten to do that then afterwards you notice that it's a little off and then you've got to level something that's full of concrete. If you can avoid that, that would be great. Also, another pro tip, cover your screw holes with painter's tape. That way you can get at them after they've been covered with concrete. Lube it up with WD-40. Wipe off the excess. Five quarts of water per bag. By the way, as per usual, I'm using the uh, Rapid Set Mortar Mix in tandem with the Rapid Set Flow Control to give it some more fluidity and strength. Marshall Town Bucket Scraper. Pick one up, link down below. Don't muck about, get right back to mixing. All right, 
I'm like three quarters of the way full, so now I'm gonna add my reinforcement. That's about halfway in there now. And for a little added insurance, some half inch rebar along the front and the back. those bubbles out because you don't want any voids in the middle of the concrete. <sighs> Alright, that's good for now. Uh, I want to finish trowel this, uh, completely unnecessary, but uh, I just want to make sure that there's no boogers or high points that are going to mess with the installation when I install this on top of the cabinets. Too soon to do that right now. Uh, I'm going to wait about five minutes. I'll clean all my tools and buckets up by then this should be ready to finish trial but if you're using the rapid set product you're going to be able to demold this in one hour absolutely nothing wrong with other products but you'll have to wait three to seven days to demold that stuff if you got that kind of time cool if you don't have that kind of time and you need this stuff done yesterday that's the way to go now in about 15 minutes this is gonna start to kick, and you'll know it because you're gonna see light spots, which are hard spots. That's when it's gonna become extremely important to water cure for just one hour. That's gonna prevent uh, surface cracks from happening. One hour later. I don't care how many times you've done this, this is still the most exciting and nerve wracking part of making a concrete countertop, is taking the mold off. See, the, this is why it's best to use rigid foam for the knockouts. Uh, I will be able to get this out eventually, but it's gonna be so much harder than it needs to be. Got a crack. I wasn't being a patient enough. Six hours later. All right, everything else is fine. I didn't cause any more cracks down on the other side. Just this one big crack. No big deal. Uh, I, I'm gonna mix up a slurry real quick, fill those cracks in. When we polish this, you'll probably never even know it's there. Besides, I think this is my father-in-law's side of the vanity, so who cares? Just kidding, Dad. You know I love you. All right, now for the polishing step. Uh, first, since my in-laws want that exposed aggregate, to get down to that exposed aggregate quicker, I'm gonna use this rough diamond wheel right here. Now, when I do this, it is so important to keep that nice and flat and not go this way or that way. You will gouge it and you will gouge it deep and very easily. Then I can move on to my polishing pads and I'm still using these Stadia polishing pads and they're showing no signs of wear so far. I love these. Again, everything I'm using in this video, link in the description down below. So I'm just gonna go through my grits. 50 grit, 100 grit, 200 grit, 400 grit. You get the point. But I highly, highly suggest getting one of these dust straws for your grinder 
uh, because this is going to be a dusty, dusty, dusty mess. Also make sure that you get a variable speed grinder because you can't spin these pads too fast. Uh, you wanna get it on a kind of a lower or medium speed. Uh, forget what the uh, RPMs are, but it's, it's on the Stadia box, but. All right, let's rough this surface up. Now, obviously, we have to seal this top, but I have not yet found a sealer that I am completely in love with just yet. The problem is that the sealer will either, it will check a few of these boxes, but not these boxes. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you guys this stuff. A uh, company called Simple Coat sent me their sealer. They wanted me to give it an honest review. I I'm pretty excited about this stuff because it checks all the boxes. Um, let me get my notes. Uh, it is indoor outdoor. It is food grade. Uh, there's no dry time. Uh, super easy to apply. Apparently, it's also a marine coating. It's a penetrating sealer, so it can be applied on many different materials. Uh, there's no learning curve because it's so easy to apply, and it's self-healing. I'm not sure what that means exactly, but it's self-healing. Also, uh, I thought this was really cool. It apparently does not need a recoat. We'll see about that. But another big thing that I found that was really cool is that uh, there's uh, no odors and no toxins in this. So as far as longevity is concerned, I have absolutely no idea. I have had it for a couple of months and I've tried it on a couple of different projects, tried testing it out. I tried it on the uh, bar top I just made recently. But what I'm gonna do is six months from now and 12 months from now, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description below for a video on how this held up six months and 12 months from now. So that's about the best I can do. But the other thing that I'm very excited about is this doesn't change the look at all. I hate I hate when I get a sealer and it gives it a unnatural, high gloss shine. If I'm going for a concrete look, I want it to look like concrete. I want it to stay looking like that. I want this top to stay looking the way I've made it. That's one thing that I've already found so far that I absolutely love about this sealer so far. But it's very easy to apply. Again, there's no toxins, but uh, it is a very oily product, so. I like to wear gloves. Comes in a very stylish packaging. Comes with its own microfiber cloth. Instructions. But it's really easy. They recommend that you saturate the cloth and apply it like this. They do not recommend pouring this on the top and rubbing it in. Now, as you can see, it darkens the top a little bit when you first apply it, but this is going to evaporate and it'll get light again. Now, apparently, you do two or three coats of this and you're good to go. Now, on the bar top, I did run into a little trouble with uh, the live edge. It wasn't getting me very far applying the sealer with the microfiber cloth on this rough edge. So I got a cheap paintbrush and I found it was much easier to do it like that. Then when you're all done, just to put the microfiber cloth back in its little baggie and seal it up so it doesn't dry out and you can use it again. I like it so far. This is like maybe 10 minutes later and this is not oily at all. There really is no dry time. Watermark test. No watermark, not too shabby. 
It beads up pretty good too. All right, it's been a couple minutes. Still no watermark. Not bad. But uh, thank you to Scott and Brittany for sending me your awesome sealer. I love it so far. Uh, I, this is not sponsored by Simple Coat, and I do not get a kickback on this stuff, but I was able to negotiate a 10% discount for you guys if you use discount code MICHAELBUILDS on purchase. So. It's unnecessary to put like a full bead of caulk around the cabinets. Just do some spot dabs here and there because this top ain't going anywhere. Right, we're going to pretend that I didn't need any help from my father-in-law carting this 120 pound top and I did it all by myself. Thanks, Dad. Couldn't have done it without you. All right, now we just gotta put this vanity back together and we're done with this project. What do you think? I don't think it turned out too bad. Well, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing so. I promise you won't regret it, and I'll see you in the next one.